Well, welcome everybody. This is Full Stack Academy, Grace Hopper Program, uh, and Full Stack Remotes, our first live demo day done entirely on Facebook Live. We're excited to uh, come, come to you live from New York campus, but we'll have people all across the country joining us today, and um, it's going to be an exciting day. So with me, I have myself. I am David Yang, um, CEO, co-founder of Full Stack Academy. On my right, I have Nimit Maru co-founder of Full Stack Academy. And on my left? Hi, Gabriel, instructor for uh, Full Stack 1701. And so just for those out there, 1701 is the cohort that is graduating in uh, a few days now. So with that, let me give a little intro to what we're doing today. I'm gonna share my own screen, make sure there's nothing embarrassing on it. All right, so We're starting today with New York. There'll be 10 teams from Full Stack Academy in New York City. And then uh, after those teams present their projects, we'll be switching to New York City's Grace Hopper program. Grace Hopper is a um, all women's coding bootcamp um, run at Staff Full Stack Academy. Then we'll be looking at three projects from Chicago, our campus there and our instructor there, Nick. And then we'll have three teams from our remote campus. Um, and these people, as you can see, are spread out all over the country as far as California and Louisiana, and uh, as far north as, as Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then finally, uh, we'll wrap up the day with two tech talks, one on speech recognition and web design done by remote campus students, as well as two hackathon winners who, um, and I'll explain more when we get there, what exactly a hackathon is and what exactly that they won. All right, with that, we'll get started. We'll go from 11 till 2 p.m. and you'll have us three hosting to guide you through this fun day. and. Um, and hopefully things will go well. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> yeah, so thanks, David. Um, I'm really excited to kick off this event with uh, the Full Stack On Campus Immersive class and their projects. Um, something that I think is always worth pointing out about Demo Day is that these are final projects. Uh, these students have been with us. Uh, that's a 13 week program, but they've only really been working on these projects for the last two and a half weeks or so. And a lot of that is design and coming up with their ideas and wireframing. So it's really amazing to me, every single cohort, how people can uh, create amazing full-fledged uh, real applications in an extremely short time when they put their heads to it. Uh, the first group that we have for you today uh, tackled something that is a very popular genre for uh, full stack projects, which is a game. Uh, games have a lot of really interesting logic and state and events uh, and UI UX challenges. So you can see why it's a popular category. This team tackled that you know, head on with a lot of great success. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to present their project. Take it away, guys. Thanks. Um, so my name is Maria, and these are my teammates, Jay, Zuckman, and Dan. And together we built Ankara which is a real-time multiplayer game based off of the board game Istanbul. So when we were deciding what we wanted to build, we knew we wanted something that would be fun for everyone, but that would be an interesting and difficult engineering challenge for us. So we heard about Istanbul, and in 2014, this game won the Kennerspiel de Yaris Award, which is an international game award for uh, game design, and especially complex and masterful game design. So um, in this game, you play a merchant moving around a modular board, which represents a marketplace. You have a wheelbarrow, and you're collecting resources, bartering, selling, and ultimately trading in for this higher order special resource, uh, which is a ruby. So the first person to win five rubies wins the game. And a lot of the complexity of this game comes from the fact that um, each location presents its own game logic. We've got the black market, the tea house, 16 separate locations, and um, or in our case, 12. And we also have, uh, at every turn, a player is faced with different options based on uh, the player's state and the game state as a whole. So to explain some of our game architecture, here is Jay. Thank you, Maria. Because Ankara is a multiplayer game, we need a way for players to know about each other's game state. Um, we also wanted the game state to persist in case there is an interruption during the play. So we connected players to the Firebase, which is a real-time database that uh, pushes uh, state changes to its connected clients. That solved our real-time uh, real update issue, but we also wanted to 
prevent players connecting to the database directly. So we came up with one-way data flow architecture where all the game logic first go through the server, then the server updates the Firebase, which passes down the game state to each player. To talk about what players do with the game state, here's Suckman. Thank you, Jay. So in designing our game logic, we considered all of the moving parts in our game, and we knew we needed to make our components as modular as possible. We currently are using over 35 different selectors in order to fetch data from the Firebase database. That, coupled with the player's input, gets channeled through some 40 different routes in order to process game logic and write that back into our Firebase database. We also needed a way to handle the player's decision flow at every turn. To do that, we created a container component that will cycle through different dialogues. So players can go from decision dialogues back and forth until they decide to end their turn. This allows us to add some validation in the front end, disable some buttons, and add some conditional rendering where needed so players are only presented with valid decisions to make. This is how we tackle our game logic, and Dan will share about our UX design. Thank you, Suckman. <clears throat> One of the unique challenges of tackling an online adaptation of a board game is emulating the player's experience of actually playing one. To that end, we believe that Ankara demonstrates a beautiful game with seamless UX design. We, to achieve this, we incorporated um, subtle animations with dialogue transitions to give players a fi appropriate feedback. Um, sorry. And perhaps most importantly, um, we integrated the HTML5 drag and drop capabilities to mimic player movement across the board. Furthermore, we recognize that part of the fun of playing a board game is the community element. Ankara has an in-game chat functionality with sound feedback and color change notifications to indicate unread messages. Players, players can also pull up a game log to view their game history. Altogether, we believe that Ankara captures the most enjoyable elements of playing a fun yet complex board game. Again, our team is Maria, Jay Suckman, and myself. You can play our game live at AnkaraBoardGame.com. Thank you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and take it away, David. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a, that's a super strong start. The project hits all, my, all the things I like. Uh, they have something really clever with their kind of one-way flow of data. Uh, I think that's something that Redux is really making people rethink. Looks beautiful. Uh, is deployed and playable. Um, so yeah, for me, that was, that was grade A. <laughs>